Hey guys, this is a uh, video response for the Nutcase Survivalist. He asked me to do a video on um, my acetylene torch, my cutting ring, and he sort of asked, you know, he said he didn't see any really good videos out there, or um, very little, few videos on uh, YouTube on uh, cutting rings. So I said, all right, well, you know, what the heck, I'd love to do it. Um, he asked me to kind of go over the whole system, um, and uh, this is what we'll do. First, let's talk about uh, the kind of setup I do have. I have an oxygen acetylene rig. Um, now you can you, you can set up a two tank rig. You can use um, I use acetylene as my fuel. You can use propane. Some people use MAP. Um, the only difference is the fuel that you use is going to burn at a different rate. Uh, you know, different. There's going to be a different BTU. Acetylene burns around 6,500. Um, I believe propane burns around I want to say 23 and MAP burns a little bit hotter than that so um, you can cut with propane and you can cut with MAP as well um, I just like acetylene now you can get your tanks from um, a number of different suppliers out there basically all you have to do is just go in there and you can sign a lease for tanks and you lease them and you pay a, uh, a yearly maintenance fee you know some people you know um, it's different different rates for different places that you go um, and they different they offer different services so basically just go around to your different welding supply houses in your neighborhood or in your in your area and just you know shop around see who's got the best rates and the best have here's my here's my tank set up and um, I'm sorry it's kind of tight, but this is the way I like to have my tanks. When you're dealing with high pressure tanks, you want to have them secure. I have them chained in here. Um, it's kind of tough to see the chain, but I got a chain wrapped around them, and I have this, um, I have the, the chain bolted to this steel table, and the steel table's bolted to the, uh, the steel table's bolted to the floor, so they can't really go anywhere. And plus I have this other, other wall here. The only dangerous way would be if the tank fell out this way, but like I said, I have a chain in place so it can't fall. Um, it's very dangerous if they fall, and the, and the protective covers aren't on. This is the protective cover for the oxygen, and basically when your regulator's not on there, it goes over top of the valve so you can transport them safely. Um, if that valve gets snapped off, I'm sure if you haven't seen the Mythbusters show where that shows it going through the concrete wall, it's no exaggeration. These tanks will, they'll, they'll go through steel walls. There's that much pressure there. So, very dangerous. Be very careful and always have them secure. So, what you want to do is, um, once you get them hooked up, what you want to do is you get, your, you get your tanks home, you get them set up, you get them chained in, you get them secure, and then you're going to go ahead and put your, your regulators on. I'm not going to take my regulators off for this demonstration. They're already on there and we can go over how to do it. Um, basically, okay, this is, the, uh, this is the acetylene regulator and I have some pretty old beat up regulators here um, and they, were, they weren't very much, they're pretty, pretty cheap set up. Um, I think I paid like, I want to say 150 for the whole set. And uh, Basically, um, the acetylene regulator is a reverse thread, just like a propane tank or any kind of a fuel tank. They use reverse thread. And what you would do is you'd go ahead and get your oxygen. Same deal, except for this is a this is a, a regular thread. This is not a reverse thread. You just get your oxygen regulator bolted on here, and you hook up your green line. Once you get them all hooked up, okay. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and hook up your hoses to your torch, and it's indicated on the torch here which one goes where. Okay, and then once you get that hooked up, turn your what you're going to do is turn your knobs all the way off, so they're off. Okay, then so the the gas is going to stop here. Let's talk about the the regulators a little bit here. The first regulator, the first gauge on the regulator, tells you how much is in the tank when you turn your tank on. The second gauge on the regulator is going to be the flow of gas that's coming through the regulator into the hose and eventually to the torch. So basically, if you have this all the way off, okay, you have this all the way off, this gauge will read zero 
when you crack your when you crack your tank on. All right. When you turn your tank, when you go to let the oxygen into the torch, you're going to crank this open to a predetermined number, and we'll talk that we'll talk about that a little bit more. Once you get these gauges hooked onto the tanks like this, you're going to go ahead and get yourself your bottle. You're going to go down. Best thing to do is go down to the dollar store, go down to Walmart, something like that. Get one of those cheap squeeze bottles. Okay, those little cheap little spray bottles that you can put whatever in bleach or whatever you do. What you're going to do is you're going to get one of those spray bottles. You're going to get a little water in it and put a few drops of dish soap in it. You're going to take it back out. When you crack your tanks, when you first crack your tanks, you're going to spray your regulators, all the fittings that you just connected to the tanks and to the regulators. You're going to spray them. When you spray them, if there's any air, if there's any leaks of the gas of any, anywhere, you'll see the bubble. And you'll know that you have to go back and, and fix that and, and tighten up that valve or whatever you need to do. Um, because you can't have any escaping gas like that. It's very dangerous. So then, uh, so once you get that all done, said and done, what you're going to do is you're going to get ready to uh, test your torch as well. Alright, now remember we had these ones closed off, so you're going to spray these fittings first and make sure there's no leaks there. Once, you, once you're sure that there's no leaks there, you're going to turn your oxygen valve off on your torch and you're going to crack open your O2. Okay. When you crack your oxygen open, it can't go anywhere because it's being stopped here at this valve. All right, so let's talk about the torch a little bit, guys. Um, basically, we're all hooked up, and we've sprayed everything down, and we make sure that we have no air leaks uh, anywhere. Now, what you could even do is um, you could you could hold down on the tip of the torch here. And you could crack open your your two valves there, and crack this valve here. So you'll have O2, you'll have oxygen and acetylene coming right to the tip of the torch. And because you got it plugged off with your finger, you can spray up here too around the, around the um, the nozzle of the torch and all the fittings just to make sure that you have no leaks anywhere. Um, so once you're sure that you have no leaks and stuff like that, you're gonna go ahead and back and, and turn your valves off. Okay, turn your regulators off, turn your, turn your tanks off, go back and wipe everything down, get all that soapy water off of everything, and then you'll be ready to, uh, to at least fire up your torch. Okay. All right, guys, so let's talk about flow rates for your, uh, for your tanks now. Um, for my particular tip that I'm running in my torch, I'm going to run 8 pounds of acetylene and 30 pounds of oxygen. Okay, so again... We go to crack our tanks, we turn our tanks on, okay? The first, let's go ahead and do it. Make sure my torch is all the way off, everything's off on my torch. Make sure torch is completely off. Let's go ahead and crack our tanks. Now, for the torch that I'm running and the tip that I'm running in my torch, I'm going to run 8 pounds of acetylene to 30 pounds of oxygen. So basically, again, this gauge, is, this gauge is telling me how much I have left in my entire tank. This gauge is telling me how much oxygen I have coming through this, this hose. Again, same thing here. First gauge tells me how much I have in my tank. Sex, second gauge tells me how much acetylene I have coming through. How much acetylene I have coming through. All right, guys. So now that we talked about our regulators and things like that and our setup, let's talk about our torch a little bit. And primarily the tip of your torch because that's going to be the most, so to, that's going to be seeing the most heat, all right? And uh, that's kind of the, the biggest, I guess the biggest consumable part of the uh, torch would be the tip. What you're going to want to do is, okay, you got these holes in it. Let me see if I can get a better look for you. There's holes. The ones on the outside of the perimeter there are what are known as like a, like a, like, like a preliminary, like a heating hole. Like it's designed to heat the adjacent metal. Whereas the hole directly in the center here is going to be what's doing the, the actual cutting. All right. And there's a, you have to maintain these. Um, they will get clogged with slag. What you're going to get is you're going to get one of these little kits. And this is what it looks like. 
It's a little case. And these little tiny round files live in there. All right. And what you're going to do is when you go to clean your, your tips, you just use your little round file, whichever one, you know, whichever size needs fit in the hole, and you just ream those holes out and you keep it nice and clean. Because um, like I said, that's going to be, you got to really take care of that because that's going to be what's going to determine whether you have a good cut or a bad cut. Just know that the, the acetylene is the fuel, it burns, the oxygen is added to the acetylene to make it burn even hotter. So, what you're going to have is, you're going to have what's known as the feather that comes out of the end of the torch. Okay, and that's going to be the biggest part of the flame. You're going to have some inner cones that are very close to the tip of the torch. Okay, what you want to look for when you fire up your torches, you're going to look at your feather, nice and nice big blue flame feather, and on the inside those cones are going to be really bright blue, but on the very outside of the cone, it's going to be a line that's even brighter blue. And that's what we're going to look for. Now, when you go to fire up your torch, I got a speed glass helmet, okay, that I can set for uh, cutting. You want at least a T, like a shade 5, um, sh shade 5 or 6. Um, if you can get a shade 8, that's even better. And what I mean by shade, I mean that's the different shade of darkness that you can buy when you go to your welding store. You're going to need to get some some proper cutting glasses. I had some, they broke, but my speed glass works for me. Now let's go ahead and fire up our torch. Crack our tanks, make sure that we're flowing at, our, at what we want to flow at. We're going to open our gas valve on our torch, down here. You're going to open your valve a little bit, just crack it. And you're going to crack open your oxygen valve on the top here. Okay. Now, you can see that the outer flame, the biggest part of the flame, that's your feather. You can see the inner cone has got that brighter blue flame. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my gas a little bit more. And I'm going to add the oxygen until I get it to where we want. Now that looks pretty good to me. You can see that there's a nice big feather there. And look at those cones. Look at the cones right on the inside. You can see that they're that nice bright blue with a nice bright blue outline. We're going to add more oxygen by pressing our lever here. And that will push through that steel. They'll push the, it'll push the molten puddle right through the steel and then we can cut. Okay. So let me, get a, let me get a piece of steel set up ready to cut and then we'll do it. Alright guys, so we're going to get ready to cut this piece of steel here. I got it viced into the table here. In this one. That's the beauty of having a cutting torch is that you can handle steel like this no problem. Um, I, think, I think every house should have a cutting torch. Let's fire up our torch. Plug the top here out. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get our flame the way we want it. Okay. That's pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and fire steel. Now before you cut, you're going to want to head, go ahead and get it nice and warm. And I don't know if you can see the difference, but there's, well, there's water in there. We're going to take the water out, we're going to burn, we're going to get the metal hot enough so all the corners of the metal release the water. I'm just going to cut a little corner off for you. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get a little molten puddle going right on the edge. It's easier to get it going on the edge. Get a nice long puddle going. I'm going to push my oxygen lever and I'm going to push that steel through it. I'm going to pull the puddle for you.
just wanted to say um, thank you very much. I wanted to say thank you very much for watching. Thanks everybody for watching and uh, thanks everybody for uh, all my subscribers. I really appreciate it, man. Um, you know, I do these videos for you guys. So um, if there's any other, you know, video requests out there, man, I'd be happy to do it. Just uh, let me know.